the drama. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. White knuckle grip over here. Hi, hi Joe. Are you okay? Can you guys hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. How are you? Are you all right? I'm doing all right, man. I'm doing good for the most part. For this, uh, for this, bum, for this bum leg. <laughs> we'll talk a little bit about that. I mean, that injury looks... I saw the pitch up. It looks so nasty. Just to, just to let you know, you're on with myself, Ray, and also my co-host, Patrick. Hey, how are you doing, Jared? Hey, how you guys doing, man? Can you guys... Uh, uh, can you guys hear me all right? Is it yeah, okay? Yeah, we can, hear you, we can hear you really well. Can you hear us okay? Yeah, I can hear you guys great, man. Great. Brilliant. Thanks for having me. Oh, absolute pleasure. We were so uh, we were first going to say we really appreciate you giving us the time, especially so close after obviously after your fight. We're we're really pleased to, to get you on the show. Let's talk a little bit about you know go back into the fight and the injury. How on earth did you come out in that second round with that with that injury? Um, <laughs> to be honest, man, I think I think most fighters would have done that. You know, I don't. I just uh, just the way I've been coached, the way I've been taught, the way I've been just raised up. I guess you don't ever you don't ever quit. So. I, uh, you know, I don't know. I didn't, I mean, to be honest, it's just the way people have taught me. And so I just came, you know, I knew it was torn because I felt it tear. It actually, most people thought that it happened when he leg kicked me, but it happened on the takedown because uh, he had picked me up in that judo, judo grip and uh, I had extended my leg. And when I hit on the extended leg, it, it tore up by my glute, up by, by my, um, the top of my hamstring. And I felt it tear and then I stood up. And uh, when he kicked me, it just transferred the weight to that back leg, and it, it, it was the weirdest feeling because I couldn't, I couldn't walk, I couldn't put any weight on that leg. It was just, it was, I couldn't believe when you come out for that second round. I mean, uh, the amount of heart you showed in the first round, anyway, because obviously you both stood there, and and you know, as 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 you've come known to do, you both stood there and traded punches, and you both landed shots and you both took shots. But then to come out in the second round, knowing that's what you're going into again, and obviously you'd lost your leg movement, you couldn't, you couldn't move around, so. In effect, you were like a standing target. I just, I just couldn't believe that you, you know, you'd managed to get yourself out there for that round, for that second round. To be honest with you, well, it was, it was funny, man, because I came in, like I said, I knew it was torn, and then the, the round, the first round ended, and, then, and my coaches were like, you know, tell me what to do and say and do this and do that, and I looked at him and I was like, hey guys, I said my hamstring's torn. I was like, I can hear what you're telling me to do, but I can't do any of it. <laughs> and I started laughing. And they're like, once they, once they knew that, they're like, oh. And I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna go out there. Like, there's, there's, there's no question about it. And my, my coaches know how I think, how I think too. But I was like, yeah, I can hear you guys coaching, but just so you know, I can't, I can't do anything that you're telling me to do. <laughs> oh, gosh, I was watching the fight, and I, I mean, I've been watching the, the sport for a long, long time. And one of the things you, you never really like to see is when you see somebody taking too much punishment. And I'm not saying they can't, the fighters can't take it because I, I know a lot of the fighters they're they're as tough as nails. Sometimes it's too tough for their own good, if you think. And I think this was a prime example. But I was watching it, and I was willing the the referee to stop the fight. Not not because you can't take the punches, because I, I, I know that you can, just because I just didn't feel that they, they were necessary. You, you'd taken so much punishment already, and it, you, you know I just wanted wanted it to end just to say you weren't getting punished anymore. Yeah, no, he, well, you know I think the, the it's funny because the ref the ref at the end because to be honest, man, I was, I was still I still my my mindset I wasn't really dazed or knocked out necessarily. But the ref, because the ref looked at me, he's like, dude, I just had to, I had to stop it, man. I, I can't let you go any farther. I was like, I understand, dude. <laughs> I was like, like I get it. Like, um, I just, cause he, cause he had, he, he knew that it was, it was my leg that was hurting, and, uh, and so when he stopped, I was like, dude, I have no question. But should, he, I mean, I, I honestly haven't seen the fight yet, um, so I don't know if I, I'll, I'll have, to, I'll have to look at it and see whether he should have stopped that beforehand. But, uh, but yeah, I was definitely getting cracked. But I don't, I don't have to see the fight first. <laughs> Yeah, I think it's like you say. It's just, it's obviously what what you're trained for. It's just, a, it's a mental toughness. That's the only thing I can put it down to. But I mean, up to the point of the injury, the fight was extremely close, and it it really could have gone either way. But obviously, once you'd got injured, you were literally fighting on one leg, and you 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 obviously had no movement. And when you're standing there boxing, you need to be able to get out of the, out of the way of the punches, and you just couldn't do it. Yeah. Well, was was funny with with um with Mike. Mike's actually a cool guy. We actually cut weight a little bit together. It's kind of funny. Um, I'm a cool dude, and so like like in, the, in those first two minutes, we were going back and forth, and I was I was trying to move around. I mean, l- at least from what I can remember, I was trying to move around as much as I could and go in there and in and out and whatever. And uh, and then in the second round, I just I told the coaches like, listen, I can't move. I just, I'm I'm just gonna try and stand there, and, and if I can, knock them out, and you know, basically just go for broke, I guess. And um, I don't I don't remember if Mike hit me or whatever, but I threw a combination. And um and it got him pretty good and then he fell back and he and I, I wasn't able to advance on that I wasn't able to to continue keeping pressure on him and I think right there he realized that I 
can move around. And um, and then he, he just went to town on me, obviously. But uh, yeah, it was funny, man. That, in that second round, I, I my mindset was like, all right, you know what? I can't move anywhere, but uh, you know, hopefully, hopefully you would come and attack me, and I can do something. But you know, it was kind of funny. So obviously, we've 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 obviously emailed back and forth to, to arrange what you know our interview for today. Have you do you know yet uh, when you're going to be having your surgery to get your leg repaired? Yeah, I found out. Um, um, it's it's completely unattached and it's retracted into my into my leg, and so I'm having surgery on Tuesday actually. Um, because the uh, the um, they're so swollen that they really couldn't do anything just yet. I mean, my my leg looked like an ogre leg. I and, saw uh, the pictures on the internet. Yeah, it was just wicked looking. And so um, the good news is that I have I have a really, really, the UFC did a good job of hooking me up with an awesome doctor. And uh, it's the uh, Denver Broncos team doctor. And so he's used to dealing with high-level athletes and whatnot. And so I talked to him today, and he's like, yeah, it's definitely it's definitely torn and removed from the bone. And, and uh, surgery is uh, planned on Tuesday, hopefully. Oh, brilliant. I just wanted you to know, as, you, as you're describing that injury, I'm sitting here wincing. Just hearing you talk about the injury. Uh, so what's the what what happened? You have the surgery. You know, obviously everything's going to go well. You know, we're, we're putting out positive things. Everything's going to go well on the surgery. How long will it be before you ready? You'll be able to start training again. Well, you know, to be honest, the the I don't know completely, but I do know. Like I said, the guys, um, the guy that I do my strength and conditioning with, his name's Lauren Lando, and and him and this doctor that's doing the uh, surgery, the uh, Denver Broncos doctor. They um they're all in the same area and so and they also have um, rehab facilities right there so all my guys that are I mean, that are working on my leg and then the rehab are all going to be together working together so it and it's some of the best in the world and so I have some of the some of the better rehab guys in my corner and so they, I mean the doctor said it's going to be a couple months for sure so I mean I'm assuming you know at least that and, until I can start using my leg so we'll see. Okay, and you you talk a little bit about Mark. You're saying he's you know you, you get on with him, got on with him quite well. Have you spoke with him since the fight? Um, kind of over over social media, I guess you could say. Like um, we we you know we, we made some comments to each other. Like it was a great fight, man. That was awesome. Hope and he he told me you know I hope you I hope you get better. I hope the leg heals up fast and whatnot. And I said, hey man, thanks for the fight. It was great. And uh, you know and that, and that's what I love about the UFC is like most people think that we're a bunch of punks. You know we hate each other, but. Dude, Mike was a cool guy, cool dude. I got to talk to him um, a little bit before the fight, and I got to talk to him after the fight and whatnot. So I really enjoyed that. Yeah, I think it's fair to say that obviously you're always going to get your your pre-fight build up, and some some guys are, are better at selling it than others, and you, you know you get your bad vibes stuff. But I think it's I think one of the things I always enjoy is after the fight is, is the respect between the two two guys that have been there and, and giving up their all base. It's always nice to see that at the end of a fight. I think. Oh, no, for sure, man. And I, I wish, I wish to be honest, that the public could see that more. That the uh, the mainstream media could could understand that, because I still get that 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 idea sometimes from fans. They'll be like, "Oh, man, did you did you ever did you ever get a chance to talk to him? Do you hate that guy?" I'm like, "No." I was like, "We're I actually, to be honest, I've had a beer with every single guy that I've fought in, in my career after the fight. It's always been a, it's always been a good time. Or it's like it's kind of like rugby, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, and I wish I wish that the the public could uh, could actually see that after the fight. I, 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 do, I do think the perception is a lot better now than say what it than what it has been say with say with say five years ago to now. I think people are get starting to get that now. I mean, people that have been following the sport for a long time, you know, and I put myself in there. We we knew that anyway, but I think people are starting to see that now. They're starting to see that it's. It's a, one. It's a skillful sport, and two, there's the the amount of respect between the guys is is there, and it's genuine as well. Right on. No, I agree, and I would I would say that it's come light years, you know, ahead since since what it used to be like, and I, and I'm glad, and and also too, to be honest, the UFC is doing a good job of shifting its focus to that because uh because you know now being on you being on Fox and being on uh, uh such a high, such a big promotion like Fox and whatnot, they uh they they have to have their athletes behaving in a, in a proper way. They want to have the right image in the public, and so they're really pushing that. For fighters to to have the right you know the right conduct, I guess you could say. Yeah, and I think that's I think that's obviously how it should be anyway. And if if the sport's going to continue to move forward like it's doing, you know, that's what needs to happen. Going a little bit back, uh, obviously over your career, you've, you've obviously been fighting within MMA for a long time. What made you want to get into mixed martial arts? 
just a, well, I, I'll, I'll explain it this way. I have a, um, anybody that has an older brother will understand this. My older brother and I used to fight all, all the stinking time. Like, uh, we used to watch American Ninja and all these, you know, ninja movies growing up. And we, we would just beat on each other. And in fact, my brother, my brother, my older brother's in my corner every fight. And uh, I w- I've always just, I've never been a finesse type. Like, for instance, I can't play basketball. I'm horrible at it. I can't play baseball. I can't play, you know, whatever. I was, I was, I was good at football, which is an aggressive sport. And uh, so I got, I got into MMA because I was like, man, this is fun. This is like a, the, the ultimate test. I want to try this out. Shoot, let's go for it. And I, and I, I hadn't planned on making it a career. I was just doing it for fun, to be honest. So how did it come about that you were, you were picked up by the UFC? And how, and obviously, how did you feel getting that recognition and being brought into, you know, what's fair to say is the big, or biggest MMA organization in the, in the world? Oh, it was great. It was, it was great, man. To be, I, the reason why I like being picked up by the UFC is because I felt like it gave legit, legitimacy to the guys that had coached me so much. Like, like for, for instance, me, I love fighting, whether it's in the backyard, in the octagon, in a ring, it, wherever. You know, I, I just enjoy it. Uh, not in a street fighter, men, men, you know, mentality. Just I, I like the battle. And um, just being part, you know, just being getting picked up by the UFC is like, oh, wow, man. It's like, this is cool. Like, like uh, they recognize my hard work and my skills and, and the guys that had coached me, you know what I'm saying? I felt great for them because they, they, you know, it showed that they had such good coaching ability to get take this guy. Because I started about five or six years ago training and fighting all at the same time. Like, I really had no, I had no martial arts experience before this. And I thought it showcased my coach's ability to bring a guy from the ground level to the UFC, um, UFC uh, skill level. Yeah, it's, I suppose it's when you do that kind of thing in your training. It's even though you're the one leading the way, it's the, it's a team thing, isn't it? They're the one, you know, they're they're part of your team. Yeah, no, you know what I'm saying. Like, I, no, no one's. I've always said, you know, no one's ever gotten to where they've gotten by themselves. There's no doubt about it. And I've had some great coaches along the way. You know, I'm the one who's fighting in the ring, you know, but I mean, without the skills that those guys have, have given to me and, and the, the work ethic they put into me and, and stuff like that, I wouldn't, I, I would have never gotten to where I've gotten without their help. No doubt, no doubt about it. And you're talking about your, your brother, he was in your corner. Does he, does he coach you as well then? Yeah, <laughs> he, he's my mental toughness training coach. Uh, when I was younger, so that's what he calls it. He he basically just beat me up. So he <laughs> he calls it mental toughness training, coaching. I say just beating beating on your little brother. So but but he my brother doesn't fight or anything like that. He just um he's just my older brother. So I always have him in my corner. Do, do you beat him up now to get your revenge? Oh, oh yeah, I give it to him every time. Like and and I and I tell him I was like, man, I don't, I don't feel bad for you when I kick you or punch you or whatever because <laughs> I was like, I have so much to pay you back, man. It's gonna be a long time before. I get that to that point. <laughs> Tell him it's you're just giving him some mental toughness training. Yeah, I'm just giving it, I'm just giving it back. <laughs> well, I know Patrick's eager to jump in, so I'll let Patrick come and ask you some questions. You ready to go, Patrick? I'm ready. How are you doing this afternoon, Jared? You nursing uh, nursing that leg, I'm sure. Yeah, just man, trying trying to gimp around on these crutches, man. Crutches are the most annoying thing in the world. Man, I can imagine. You know, uh, you talked with Ray a little bit. Uh, obviously, you knew during the fight your hamstring was torn. It looked like you were bracing yourself to sit on your stool between the first and second round. Now, obviously, there's no quitting you. But if you had known that the hamstring had detached from your bone as opposed to just a regular tear, would you have still gone out? Yeah, uh, yeah. I, you know, I, and, and again, it's not, it's not trying to be like a tough guy. Or like, I just... I've always, I've always, you know, coming from my football background, I just, I've always been taught you never give up, never surrender a situation. And I, and I understand people are like, well, you have a, t- you could have hurt yourself more and done this. And, you know, I just, I don't know, man. I don't know. I don't function that way. And, um, you know, and, and, uh, I, I had, I know, cause I knew it was, I knew it was torn pretty bad. I knew I couldn't stink and walk, walk on it. You know what I'm saying? Like, to be honest, it wasn't yeah. that painful. It wasn't that painful because you're full of adrenaline and you're full of stuff, you know, you're just full of, you know, you know, a fight, I guess. But the weirdest thing is, is that even though it didn't hurt, I uh, just couldn't stabilize. I couldn't get it under me. And so um, it started hurting later on. But but uh, I don't know. I just, this is just the way that the guys that I've been mentored and coached my whole life is just you just keep on going, especially in a fight. I don't know. Yeah, absolutely. That's that's a great, great drive, great mentality to have. Um, now, post UFC 150, 
Dana White had stated that he was going to throw a, a little bonus your way for the fight with Michael Kuyper. Can you tell us, uh, you hear anything from Dana White? He sent a little extra check your way for that? You know what? To be honest, I, I, haven't, I haven't gotten it yet. But um, I've actually gotten, I've gotten, um, that's the thing that people, people don't understand about the UFC is that, is that uh, you know, sometimes there's the bonuses that you see, knock out of the night, fight of the night, and uh, stuff like that. But uh, um, right. There's, they also have discretionary bonuses here and there, and I've, and I've gotten those. You know, you, you get this check, and they're like, "Where the heck did this come from?" Um, and so, <laughs> you know, it's pretty sweet. And then, and then when Dan explained that to us later on, I'm like, "Oh, okay." So, uh, so I, the, I haven't, I haven't gotten it yet. But uh, from what and, you know, Dan is always, he's always honest about what he does. And so I'm like, "All right, cool, man. That'd be sweet." So it, it makes, it makes losing and tearing your hamstring a little bit better. But uh, to be honest, I'd, I would have rather had the win, but having a bonus always helps. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Ray and I, we were talking a little bit about that. You know, the the bonuses they'll they'll make the victory a little better, but and, and it definitely, uh, I'd assume, help take some of the sting out of a loss. Um, well, the now, little, the funny thing is that I told, so I I train with Cowboy Cerrone. He comes and he trains okay. at Grove and whatnot. And I told Cowboy, I said, Cowboy. I was like, dude, I gotta stop fighting on the same card as you, man. And he started laughing. I'm like, dude, you always take all the bonuses. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he he seems like a bonus hog for sure. Yeah, I know he is. <laughs> um, you know, um, I saw your video that you had put out. I think this came out before your fight with CB Dalloway. It was called "The Passion for MMA," mm-hmm. and I'll tell you what, that's that's probably the best video I've ever seen put out by a fighter. You talk about your mom, your grandmother, uh, different life experiences. It's just a, a brutally honest yet positive video. Uh, what was the aim of that video? Uh, the guys, the guys that did that, that was their. Um, they also did a, uh, a documentary on Vladimir, and I believe they did one with John McCarthy. And uh, you know, they they, they did such. A good, I, I laugh at them because I was like, "You guys did such a good job of making me look good." I was like, "Cause we, we there's like three hours." <laughs> I'm like. I'm like, and the guy's name's Eric. I'm like, Eric, I was like, man, you did a good job of actually making me look pretty good. And I was like, that's pretty cool. I was like, great job. Um, and uh, the gist of that was they wanted to not just show what a fighter was, you know, as far as just fighting. They wanted to get into their, their background, their lifestyle, and, you know, what makes us who we are and stuff like that. It's pretty cool. It's very well done by those guys. And like I said, they, they made a big old knucklehead look pretty good, I guess. <laughs> no, you know, you came off real well in in that video. You look like a real positive guy and and just a guy who's motivated by by all the right reasons and like you and Ray talked about a little bit earlier, um that's that's just great for the sport, you know. It's great to see that that there are athletes like that that are down to earth, you know, well-rounded guys, guys based around family or, you know, just just a good moral background, really. Well, you know, my, my uh, hope- my hope because people are like man why would you go out and do that like i would have just quit and i'm like well here's the thing man like i wanted to showcase well i wasn't trying to i just i just i would i would hope that like friends i had my dad grew up without a father right and which is like a typical thing i guess nowadays which is sad but i had a lot of guys step into my life and mentor me and coach me and, and, and take up that role and uh you know, I'm hoping that people can see that and be like, you know what, you know, you're always influencing somebody, whether that's good or whether that's bad, right? And I, and I hope that people can take that and say, like, yeah, you know, it matters a ton when you when you take a kid that may not have a good positive influence and you give them that positive role model. And that that's kind of like what I would like for my platform in the UFC, I guess you could say, to be used as is to be like, hey guys, you know, there's there's kids out there that need positive positive role models, and whether you're an uncle or a friend or or a neighbor or something, man, just take those kids under your arm and, and just love on them. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. That's a beautiful thing. And, uh, really makes a difference having someone from mixed martial arts come out and, and be that, uh, that role model, if you will, or, or, or just, uh, you know, a voice like that. Um, now going back, uh, your second UFC fight was with Rodney Wallace. Uh, that was the first fight I got to see you in. In that fight, Joe Rogan, he likened your physical appearance to to that of the neighborhood mailman. Uh, do you like do, do you like being seen as the everyman, or uh, do you do you take exception to the notion that there's a, a typical looking fighter? What do you think about that? Oh, dude, it's actually funny, man. It, it actually goes back to my college football days. 
I gave up a long time ago trying to be the, the good looking muscle dude. <laughs> and my best friend, my best friend always made fun of me for it because because I don't have, you know, like I have, you know, I'm skinny, skinny, skinny white boy. And uh, I, I would always live and I'd always do my best and I'd always try and I could never gain weight or look, you know, have this gigantic six pack or huge pecs. Or whatever. So a lot. This funny. A long time ago, I was like, I give up. I'm never. I'm never gonna be the DQ mom with the huge pecs or whatnot. So <laughs> to me, it just <laughs> makes me laugh, man. <laughs> hey, well, that's that's cool because you know, hey, you can represent for the uh, the average looking dudes out there, and and you still put on good <laughs> fights. Excuse so, me. So more. Oh, I said uh, you can represent for the the average looking dudes then, and and I think you represent real well. You know, you you put on a lot of great fights. <laughs> well, thank you, man. <laughs> for the post. Yeah, yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> might might have to change the name from the messenger to the postman, huh? <laughs> Possibly, yeah. So, uh, are are you still training out there uh, with Vladimir at VMAT? No, we um we actually moved out to Denver, Colorado. On my train at the Grudge Training Center with uh, guys like uh, Brendan Schaub and Nate Marquard and uh, Elliot Marshall and and uh, actually, you know, all those. Trevor winning those guys they're all out at the ultimate fighter right now helping shane carwin with that whole thing and so my coaches actually had to fly in for the fight and then fly right back for the filming of that stuff and so um i'm still good friends with vladimir and anthony and those guys henry akins and whatnot they're my really but it was more of a uh, a life move for me and my wife to come out to colorado uh, I see. Well, how, now, how's that? Uh, now, I know you're a California native all your life, correct? Born and bred, baby. Heck, yeah. <laughs> there you go. So so how is it uh, being in Colorado compared to California for your training? Well, I'll be honest, I mean, I, I'm a surfer. You know what I'm saying? I grew up surfing my whole life, so I, I miss that. But um, for definitely the, 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 the change in altitude was a big difference. Now, I've been coming out to Colorado for a while. Um, for different training camps and just, you know, for a couple of weeks on, you know, here and there just to have, you know, just get a little different look. Um, but that definitely when you come here from sea level, you know, I live in Los Angeles right there to altitude is a definite difference. And, and, and what some people don't may not realize, you know, a lot of people think, you know, you know, oxygen as far as breathing. Yeah, that sucks too. But, but, but for me, um, is that your muscles your muscles need oxygen too so like your they don't realize it's not just the breathing part in your lungs but your muscles need oxygen as well and see it's it's it, it definitely changed up your whole your whole um chemistry for for training for a fight when you're when you're at a high altitude oh sure probably uh, extends the recuperation period a little bit i'd imagine yeah 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 you know and longer warm-ups and and uh it's just man it's just but now I mean I've been out here for what eight months now, and now I'm, I'm used to it now. But but that first that first you know month was always always a fun time. <laughs> oh man, I can imagine. Um, yeah. So next question: Are you uh, once you get recovered and everything, you know, hopefully that goes smooth. Uh, are you planning on staying at 185, or are you looking maybe going back to light heavyweight? No, 185. Man, I love 185. Um, I just love it not because I mean. It was more again when I made the change to 185. It's more of a life move too. Again, um, when you like, I had a lot of stomach issues, um, digestive tract issues, and whatnot, and uh, nothing super serious. But there's a lot of um, symptoms that came off of that. Like I was always tired and this and that. And I had been to a doctor a ton of. T- in fact, I was I had been prescribed antibiotics nine times in a year for just stuff that the doctors couldn't figure out what it was. Um, I was having problems, like I said, my digestion and sinus stuff and, and, and lack of energy and whatnot. When I went down to 185 and I went and put myself on a super strict, clean diet, um, all the, all my problems, every single one of them went away. It was, um, it was unbelievable. Um, and so I'll, I will always say it this way, even, even when I'm done fighting, just because, man, to go from what well, basically is night and day, like it was such a big, huge change that, it was it was um, it was awesome, man. I was so fired up. Yeah, that's great. Um, well, just one more question. Um, when you do get when you're all recuperated, you get uh, any opponent you like to face next, or just waiting to hear from Joe Silva and the guys? 
Man, I'm just pumped I still have a job. <laughs> <laughs> like, man, I would love I would love to get a chance to fight, you know, Mike again. I thought he was cool. And I thought, to be honest, I thought that that was going to turn out to be a really good fight for the fans. He's real aggressive. He's real in your face. He always keeps coming forward. And, and, and to be honest, that's the kind of guys that I like to fight. You know what I'm saying? I think it makes for a good fight for the fans. But honestly, I mean, as a, as a fighter, it's like, yeah, it's like, heck yeah. Was, he, he's a guy that wants to scrap. He wants to get into the mix and not just, you know, play patty cake. And, um, you know, and, and, I, and I don't, there's nobody who I, I would ever call out in the UFC, but I just, I always, I've always told Joe and those guys, like, hey, man, I want to fight guys, you know, that come after it, that want to fight. And um, that's what I'm hoping. So I'm happy to just have a job, you know what I'm saying, and, uh, and to, you know, to be able to keep on doing it. Yeah, absolutely. Well, and you know what? I think you looked real good in the early going against Kuiper. You had the good footwork going. Your boxing was looking crisp and ever. You were you were darting in with the knee to the liver, it looked like. Um, you know, just a, a shame, you know, the injury seemed like it took a little bit a uh, little bit out of the toolbox there, a little bit out of the arsenal for you to use. No, I, you know, I, to be honest, I was bummed because their game plan was, you know, I mean, I always come out and get after it. And then I came out and got after it. And I was like, oh, wait, go back to the game plan, dude. Like, chill out. So we, I knew that he liked, he was a judo guy, and I knew that he wanted to come in and probably take me down and do some judo or whatnot. And I was like, I'm cool with that. Like, I'll stand right back up, you know, and, and I'll use a fence, and, and I'll tie you out. And so when he came in, and I had practiced that, I, no joke, him coming in with the double unders and getting that hold on me and doing that, and I, I'd gone over that many times. I just was not planning on getting my hamstring torn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Absolutely. <laughs> yeah that's something you, you really don't prepare for and, and to your credit you know it looked like the training had paid off i think uh the one time i saw kuiper get you down in that fight you would pop back up it wasn't more than wasn't more than five seconds you were you were on the mat and then you were right back on your feet so looks looks like things are, are progressing nicely for you sir hopefully hopefully we, we can get him get him back on track you know lord willing so hopefully the surgery goes well and the rehab goes well and uh, we can get back on it. Yeah, absolutely. Well, just I'll I'll jump in here. I just want to uh, say a, a huge thank you. We really we've really enjoyed having you on the show. It's been it's been an absolute pleasure talking with you today. Oh man, thanks for taking the time out to talk to me, man. It's uh it's always a pleasure. I, I love the UK fans, man. When I when I was went over there, um, when I fought in Manchester, I had such a good time with you guys. It was awesome. Yeah. yeah well, we. I mean, it's it's a, it's a it's a big growing sport, but we love it over here in the UK as well. I mean, I get to as many of the UFC events that I can. I've been to see quite a lot of them live uh, in the UK, so it's always good. Before we let you go, I just want to give you a chance to give a shout out. If you'd like to thank anybody or shout out your sponsors or family or anyone you you know any of you coaches and stuff. Yeah, no, no, thank you, man. I'd like to thank uh, you know I'm I'm a Christian and Jesus Christ is my savior. I thank him for everything and the ability to to even do this. Um, and I think for the fans, the fans that gave me such such positive support man after that fight because i was a little i was a little down and bummed and whatnot discouraged and uh all the fans were just such so positive and they loved it and so i just i just want to say thanks to you guys and uh, even the media too just for uh just for getting my back and just you know you know not being negative but everyone's been really positive so i appreciate that man so thank you uh, absolute pleasure i think the positive because of of what you've shown even with you know even with injury no one can que no one can ever ever question your heart and i think that as a fan you always want to see somebody leave it all out there and uh, and you did that so i think that's probably why you got such a positive response so i think that was down to your actions more than anything oh well, well i appreciate it <laughs> well uh we we uh like i said we, we appreciate having you on we hope that you get uh your injury heals up we hope your surgery goes well and we look forward to seeing you fight again in, in the octagon uh, and uh, we'll love to get, uh, have you back on the show again in the future as well. Yeah, for sure, man. Now, now I figured out this this stinking Skype stuff, man. <laughs> this is awesome. So <laughs> <laughs> it's good, isn't it? Thanks, much, guys, for having me on the show, man. I appreciate it. Thanks, Anytime. Jared. We'll speak. We'll Thanks speak for coming again. on, Jared. We'll speak you to you again soon. Good luck with the surgery. Thank you, man. Thank you, guys. Bye. Take See care. You. That was, wow, that was just fantastic. He was. Do uh, you know what? I feel like we've been really lucky today with the three guests. Yeah, absolutely. Minimal technical difficulties and maximum good conversation. That's what all we'll three of them were so easy to talk with. All three of them were an absolute pleasure. Yeah, absolutely, and um, really great to talk to Jared. Um, you know, he's he's a California guy. I'm a California guy, obviously, and. 
I just I just thought it was so funny when he talked about watching American Ninja with his brother and <laughs> you know I I think that's a lot of where MMA's popularity came from especially I don't know my generation I'm 27 and so I'm a child of the 80s and we grew up it was all it was American Ninja it was blood sport it was Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles the Karate Kid you know yeah martial martial arts was just 